Let's see now how to use the different tools available in the main panel on the second line. The first one will be the cutting tool, just here. The cutting tool is a specific tool that allows you to cut an element from the drawing space. So basically, I have a different cutting tool like uh, the rectangle, the polygon, the freehand, and the magic wand. So we'll use the rectangle one. And to cut something, I just have to click, hold the click to draw my rectangle. And here, my element has been cut. When I'm using the cutting tool, I have different options available. So, for example, I can define to copy or to cut something. So if I cut something, I will just cut it from the drawing space. And if I copy, I just make a copy. By the way, you can switch between the both modes by using the right click from your uh, stylus or from your mouse. So here I copy, and here with the right click, I cut. The shortcut to call the cutting tool is B. You will find some option like the smooth. The smooth will create a kind of gradient on the drawing, you may see it. Anti-aliasing will make sense when you are using the cutting tool freehand. Optimize will make sense when we will talk about the custom brushes. Display is interesting when, for example, we have several layers. So let's, for example, draw something here. Up. So I have one layer with the with the crow and one layer with the blue rectangle. If I use the cut brush tool and I check the display, I will copy the both at the same time. And if I don't check display, I will just copy what's in the current layer. Keep will make sense when we will talk about the custom brush. And the brush smooth actually will also make sense when we will talk about the custom brush. What a teasing, isn't it? So now let's see about the selection. I'll just delete this layer. I don't need it anymore. Okay. So selection actually, well, allows you to make a selection. Nothing complex here. The selection, so it works like uh, drawing a rectangle or cutting with a rectangle. You just hold a click to draw the selecting zone. You have three choices here. You have add, sub, and replace. So with add, you always add some selected zone. If you're using sub, you will delete some selecting zone. And if you click on replace, you will always create a new selection. By the way, um, regarding add, you can eventually switch between add and sub by using the right click. So here I add ocean, and if I do a right click, I delete, I sub the selecting zone. So we can also find the smooth, the display, and the aliasing. Just like in the cutting tool, we also have an option to invert the selection. And we can also clear the selection. So we just clear the selection. We don't erase what's inside the selection. To erase, I have to hit the scroll or the shortcut backspace. To unselect your selection, you have to click on clear. Or you can use the shortcut Command-D or Control-D for the Windows users and Linux users. Or you can also click here on Clear Selection. Once the selection is on, it means you can only draw in this selection. You can go outside.
And when you have a selection, you can also decide, for example, to copy the content or cutting the content into a new layer, like this. So I have a layer with a crow and a layer without the main crow. Then we have the zoom in options, zoom in and zoom out. So just emulate what we can already do with Alt and right click or with minus and plus or with uh, this, with the double arrows. And something that I think is very interesting is the zoom to zone. The zoom to zone will automatically zoom in a zone you have defined. So for example, if I want to zoom in the beak uh, of the crow, I will draw a little square like this and beam, I will zoom automatically on the crow's head. If I do a right click, I will unzoom like this. And if I do a normal click with the tip of the stylus or the left click like this, beam on the beak. You also have the possibility to crop, so nothing peculiar to say. You can define the crop area by changing the HUD. You can eventually log the aspect. So, for example, if you want to have something in like this, then log the aspect, and you sure you will always have the same ratio. And then hit enter or return key, or click on crop to confirm your choice. Then we have the different transforming moving tools. So let's focus on the panning first. So the panning allows me to move from pixels to pixels without loss of quality. But keep in mind that if you move something out of the drawing space and drop the stylus, then it's lost and cut forever. If you want to avoid this, you may change the shift mode for fill mode, like this. You have different choices here, like move image, move selection shape, move selection content, and move camera. Obviously, move camera is for the camera tool. Move image, move shape, and move content makes sense, especially when you have a selection. So if I click on move image, I will move the image without affecting the selection. If I click on move selection shape, I will move the selection shape without affecting the image. And if I click on move selection content, I will move selection and its content at the same time. Then we have the transform tool, uh, with the shortcut is Ctrl T or Command T. It works more or less the same as the panning tool, except to proceed with the change, you have to confirm it by hitting Enter Return key or clicking on Apply. If you don't make this change, you can still change uh, your choice, you can change your mind. You also have the option shift and fill and move image, shape or content. You can also use the panning X and Y to move from pixel to another one. You can also click on center automatically, which makes sense especially if you reduce the size of the image, like this. And you can also rotate. And here you have a reset button if you want to cancel what you've done. Here we have the anti-aliasing mode. That makes sense, especially if you are resizing and rotating the image, because since you are changing the pixels, we have to apply an anti-aliasing to give a rendering. So following the anti-aliasing, smart, pass, medium or known, you will have respectively a very good result of very poor results. And you also have the choice to apply on the current layer or the current group. So for example, if you have Let's see, do something, okay. And here I have two layers, and if I put them inside the same color group, if I proceed a change on this image and I choose 
apply on current group. When I will apply, the change will be applied on both layers. And it works as well if you do a selection. Uh, for example, if you have a, a complete animation, you can select the whole animation and apply on the current group. And you can also apply on all layers. We also have the perspective tool that allows you to put a drawing in perspective. And just like uh, the other one, you also have the choice with shift, fill, move image, move selection shape, move selection content, different X and Y axes to move the dots. Or you can, it's more simple, but you can click directly on the handles. You can also reset and you can also apply an anti-aliasing and also decide to apply on current layer, current group or all layers. And then last but not least is the warp tool. So to explain the warp tool, let's find this little guy just here. And for to make things easier, I will merge this character. Okay. So if I use now the warp tool, this warp tool will remind you something, especially if you followed all tutorials. So here we have a little detail guy and we have this grid applied on this character. And if I take the grid like this, I will change our character just like a bubblegum character. So yes, it will remind you the grid that we had on the texturizer when using the CTG layer. So the options here are more of the same. So you can, for example, define the rigidity. So the more it's rigid, the less it will be deformed. You can also define the size. You can also define the square size. And you can also define the color of the grid. Some options very interesting to know. We have, for example, control that allows you to move the character in once. It's better than doing that. Especially, I mean, when you have low rigidity, then it's moving like this. It's easier to use control. You can also use uh, pinpoints. So let's make a right click and lock this point. And so the character will turn around like this. And, and that's where it's really interesting. This warp tool can be combined with the library. So let's save this character, this little guy into the library. So we'll use the cutting tool like this. And I will go into the library and I will save this little guy as a custom brush. Here we are. Why I'm doing that? Because if here I'm using the warp tool and I apply a change, then apply a change, then apply a change, I will have a big loss of quality after several uh, changes. So in order to avoid this loss of quality, I prefer to use the library and change this character frame per frame always by apply a change on the original source, the original image. So I will up erase this little guy since I don't need it anymore. Apply. Then I go back to the warp tool and I will define the source from the library. Here we are. So let's make move this character. So let's imagine I will make it bounce apply and then I can go on the timeline and even apply the light table to see by transparency the previous image. I can eventually uh, lock several points by using shift. Make a right click and lock this point. And now I will stretch my little guy like this.
and apply and continue. So let's enjoy wine. And so when we take the time to work properly, we can have these kind of results.